1929, the Rose Bowl is the only college football bowl game. There's no pro football. The NFL did exist, but there were only 10 teams and the fan base was puny compared to college football. So every football fan in the United States was focused on what was going to happen in Pasadena, California on January 1st, 1929. The 15th annual Rose Bowl was between Georgia Tech and Cal. Cal had accepted the invite because first place Pacific Coast Conference team USC had declined. Under third year coach Nibs Price, Cal had finished the regular season with a 6-1-2 and record. Cal was playing the Georgia Tech Golden Tornado. While Georgia Tech was known as the Yellow Jackets, writers outside the South called the team the Golden Tornado, a sign of how regional football was at the time. Georgia Tech won the Rose Bowl 8-7, but it's not Georgia Tech's victory that the 1929 Rose Bowl is known for. It's known for one of the biggest boner plays to ever occur on a football field. Roy Regals was a center for the California Golden Bears. On defense, he played roving center, which is basically like being a middle linebacker. At one point in the first half, Regals scooped up a Georgia Tech fumble and ran... 50, 60, or 90 yards in the wrong direction, depending upon which account you read. Allison Danzig from the History of American Football describes Regal's run as follows. Regal's grabbed the ball that had popped out of the hands of a Georgia Tech back. Pursued by Tech players, Regal's cut across the field, reversed his field as he found himself hemmed in, and lost his bearings as he broke into the clear. The 70,000 people in the stands looked on dumbfounded as Regals headed for his own goal line 60 yards away. Benny Lom, a teammate, set out in pursuit. The faster Lom closed the gap as the crowd watched breathlessly and Regals disregarded cries to stop. At the three-yard line, Lom overhauled his captain, spun him around, and was urging him to retrace his steps when the Yellow Jackets, rushing down the field, hurled themselves upon Regals and buried him at the one-yard mark. Then Lom stood in kick formation in his end zone and took the pass from center Regals. Before he could get the ball away, a tech tackle broke through and blocked the ball. It rolled out of the end zone after being touched by a California back, and a safety was ruled, giving Tech two points. From Ron Fimreip's book, Golden Bears, a celebration of Cal football's triumph, heartbreaks, last-second miracles, legendary blunders, and the extraordinary people who made it all possible, we get, my God, that's the longest title of a book in history. Lom caught up with Regals near the Cal 20, but instead of tackling him there, he called for the ball, hoping against hope to salvage something positive from the disaster. Regals was a lineman, though, and he knew how few chances to score there were for his kind. Get away from me, he called out to his teammate. This is my touchdown. The safety gives Georgia Tech a 2-0 lead at halftime. Georgia Tech scores on a 15-yard run in the third quarter. They miss the extra point, so it's 8-0 for the Yellow Jackets. Toward the end of the game, Cal scores and they kick their extra point. The game ends 8-7 with a Georgia Tech victory, the two points being the difference. In case you're wondering, Cal couldn't have tried a two-point conversion because that wouldn't be a thing until 1958. Regals is blasted in the media. There are cartoons making fun of his play. From the Kansas City Times on January 3rd, 1929, there's this beautiful illustration of signs telling him he's headed in the wrong direction while he's running down the field. From the Austin American of Austin, Texas on the same day, we have the article with the headline, Regal's Boner Amazed Thousands, that contains the line from Regal's that says... I suppose I'll pay a stiff penalty for my boner, which I found and had to include in this video because, yes, I am a child. Now, anytime there's an article about famous bonehead plays, Wrong Way Roy Regals is included. The Sacramento Union on February 10th, 1929, we see this bit about famous boneheads in sports. It shows an illustration of Regals' 
run. In the Knoxville Journal on Christmas Eve, 1932, is an article entitled Football's Biggest Boner. Then 70 years later, here's a piece from the St. Petersburg Times, which is now known as the Tampa Bay Times. From September 26, 1999, we learned more about what happened at halftime. Regals didn't want to come out for the second half. His coach, Clarence Nibs Price announced that the second half starters would be the same as those in the first half. All but Regals began heading toward the field. Coach, I can't do it, he said. I've ruined you. I've ruined my school. I've ruined myself. I can't face the crowd in that stadium to save my life. Price told him, Roy, get up and go back. The game is only half over. According to accounts of the game, Regals played a brilliant second half, particularly on defense, blocking a Georgia Tech punt. Wrong way Regals becomes a national and cultural phenomenon. From the Penaluma Argus Courier of Penaluma, California, Tuesday, December 16, 1969, in an article entitled, Regals Isn't Wrong in Business, we see that Wrong Way Regals was offered all sorts of endorsements and sponsorships after his big boner play. The article states, Roy Regals' Wrong Way Run in the 1929 Rose Bowl game started a series of wrong way jokes on radio that have never been equaled. Offers to Regal poured in from promoters all over the country. One entrepreneur wanted him to be in a backward walkathon in New York. A dance promoter wanted him to start a backward Charleston. A bakery wanted him to endorse a wrong way Regal's upside down cake. And a racetrack owner tried to involve him in a backward car race. Regal's gains respect from people too, probably because he faced the crowd and he came out for the second half. He didn't hide. From the Pittsburgh Press, November 3rd, 1929, a nice illustration about how Roy Regals has fought his way back, including the phrase, it would have made many a youngster curl up, but Roy fought back all the harder. Now, Regals plays football again in 1929 and becomes a team captain and an All-American, and he helps the California Bears to a 7-1-1 record. In 1971, he and Benny Lom are invited to Georgia Tech, where the entire 1928 team is inducted into the Georgia Tech Hall of Fame. He and Lom receive letterman's jackets and membership cards, which is a nice touch by Georgia Tech all those years later. He is inducted into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame in 1991. In 1998, he is inducted into Cal's Hall of Fame. After his playing career, Regals goes on to coach football in high school and junior college. He served as an officer in the Army Air Corps in World War II and later became an executive in the agricultural field. In 1955, he started his own company called Roy Regals Chemicals, which he sold in 1976. He died in March 1993 in his sleep at home at the age of 84 due to complications from Parkinson's. Further insight on how Regals handled his notoriety is found in an article from the Gettysburg Times from September 25, 1971. First, there's the joke. If I had to do it again, says Regals, I'd still run in the same direction, for surely I thought I was running the right way. And then there's the process, and I really like this part. You run the wrong way with the football in front of 60,000 people, he says, and it's pretty hard to lie out of it. I was embarrassed when I'd realized what I'd done. I wanted a, a hole to open in the ground so I could jump in it. But that soon passed, and then I reached a stage when mention of it would cause me to bristle. Soon that passed, and it has never really bothered me since, except in cases of people trying to exploit it. And that's a nice journey. It's a nice way to say, yeah, I overcame this massive, well, boner in front of everyone in the world. And that's the story of Wrong Way Regals. Now, I don't think you hear that story near as much as you did in the last century, but it's still an excellent story about overcoming a massive gaffe and going on to not only not deny it, but embrace it as part of life and part of who you are. It's a really great football story, one you should know, and I'm glad to present it to you. This is John Johnston with Hardcore College Football History. I hope you like these videos. 
Please like, share, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell everybody. Thank you. There were so many R's in this video that I have used up my quota of R's for a very long time, maybe months. Now, how am I going to mispronounce Notre Dame?